Hello, I'm Antonio Mora. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief. Today's top stories in four minutes. It's Wednesday, August 15th at 6.30 p.m. The D.C. firestorm of the day exploded when Sarah Huckabee Sanders announced that President Trump had made good on a threat to revoke the security clearance of former CIA Director John Brennan. The White House also again threatened to revoke the clearances of other top Obama officials, most of whom have been harsh Trump critics. Where to start with all the questions? Critics say the action is unprecedented and comparable to a Nixonian enemies list. But isn't Brennan's behavior unprecedented as well? What former CIA director has actively and personally attacked a sitting president the way Brennan has, going as far as calling Trump's actions treasonous? Would you continue to empower someone who regularly attacks you? The White House insisted the action was taken to protect national security, not to settle political scores. Really? Does anyone seriously think Brennan was going to do anything that would hurt national security? In fact, critics on both sides of the aisle argue that revoking his clearance and that of the others could be what actually hurts national security. And that's because current intelligence officials couldn't consult with those former officials about classified matters. Given Brennan's unrelenting attacks on Trump, though, do you think Trump officials would have gone to Brennan to consult on anything? Former CIA Director Michael Hayden, one of those possibly facing a security clearance revocation, argues that the move was to intimidate him and the others from speaking out. But will they really be intimidated? On the other hand, shouldn't the President of the United States take a higher road and avoid dishonoring the dignity of his office by using it to bully people who don't agree with him? In fact, media critics are hyping the fact that those on the list have all spoken out against Trump. Did they expect he'd punish those who praised him? And is this about Trump trying to change the subject yet, yet again, taking attention away from the Omarosa allegations and the end of the first Paul Manafort trial? The clearance revocation is dated July 26, so why announce it now? Closing arguments did end today in Manafort's bank and tax fraud trial. The defense argued prosecutors didn't prove their case, while prosecutors say they produced, quote, dozens and dozens of documents that did just that. Let's see what the jury decides. The violence in Afghanistan's ongoing civil war is darkening any hope of peace. Civilians are getting killed at a rate not seen in a decade, and U.S. troops are getting caught up in the fighting. Today in Kabul, at least 48 Shiite students were killed and 67 others injured in a bombing likely carried out by Sunni members of ISIS. Dozens of Afghanistan security forces were killed in a Taliban attack the day before. And the more we learn about the predatory pedophile priests in Pennsylvania, the more sickening the story gets and the more shame is piled on them and the Catholic hierarchy that didn't do nearly enough to stop them. In one case, a priest who had been accused at least three times of abuse still got a recommendation from the Allentown Diocese, so he ended up working at Disney World for 18 years. Outrageous. In our daily alternate universe segment, The Great Divide Between Conservative and Liberal Media, the gotcha journalism obsession of the White House press corps and much of the national media is providing the perfect foil for Trump supporters. And it's a lose-lose situation for liberal news organizations. By focusing on the just plain stupid for dramatic effect and ratings, they distract from the real issues this country is facing and the way the Trump administration is or is not addressing them. Meanwhile, conservative media happily focus on the administration's achievements. No better example of this than the outrage in liberal media circles over Sarah Sanders saying she cannot guarantee that Trump is on tape using the N-word. How exactly could she? How could she prove a negative? Even so, the story was still at the top of the news a day later, and people wonder why confidence in the news media is at all-time lows. You can find all those stories and much more updated around the clock seven days a week on newsandnews.com where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. Please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News and follow me on Twitter at Amora TV. I'll see you again tomorrow.